Hello my creatives and welcome to another video. So today I'm here to share with you something very very exciting. It is a new kind of flipbook. Uh, so this is the first time that I made something like this. It just popped up in my brain. You know that how that goes as a creative person. And I thought I would just film it right away and not try before filming. I will just go for it so this is a different kind of uh, flipbook than i ever made before which is very very exciting so first of all i start with this digital kit sunny days from maggie holmes and i have a a4 sheet of paper so this paper is now 11 inches and i score it at six inches because i want to have a back flap and a front flap I make a gusset that is one fourth of an inch so there's enough space to fold my card and then I will cut off a little piece because this card base that I'm using I wanted to hang it over the flap I think I cut off uh, maybe one inch or inch and a half I think one inch of the piece of paper that is my base <coughs> And now I'm going to glue an envelope to the white part of this paper as a foldout. But because this is one single sided paper, I will back this paper with another piece of paper. So you will not see the flap again. And it's just hidden in between these two papers. So that's very uh, exciting that you cannot see that there is... Uh, an envelope flap there that holds this whole thing together so what i'm doing now is i'm just uh, gluing with some wet glue i like to use wet glue because that gives me a little bit of wiggle room when i am placing my paper on there so it can be put on kind of straight and uh, after i burnished everything down and made sure that everything was stuck together I will cut off the excess paper. So this is what I like to do because I always trim my paper too short or too big and I have to go back into it with my scissors. So this way I know that the paper will exactly fit the other paper that's already there. So then I have here the inside of my flipbook and the envelope that flips in and out. And now I am going to re-score my fold lines so that the that it will also be in the other paper. But I like to do this twice so uh, I know how the flipbook will look and uh, I know where I scored before. Um, so that's why I do this uh, double. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, this is uh, the front and now I'm going to glue my... Uh, oh no, first I'm going to decorate. So this is a regular card base, like a pre-made card base. So I used the digital kit with A4 sheets of paper and an envelope that was with the pre-made card. And uh, that is all you need for the base of this flipbook. And you can decorate it yourself, of course. I am going to measure my card and I'm going to uh, cut out a card panel of this beautiful pattern paper that is little bit smaller than my card i like to have one eighth of an inch on all sides of space so the white will show through a little bit and now i realize that i would like to distress my ed edges so i took some distress ink in a mermaid lagoon i believe and uh, i will do this to the complete flipbook so everything will have these be beautiful blue edges so if you wonder what I used, everything is listed down below in the description box. And if I can find it online, there is also a link for you. Just remember that some of them are affiliate links and some of them are not, just so you know. And after I stuck this, uh, card pa this panel down on my card, I'm going to glue this uh, card base to my front flap. And... Um, or I'm, I'm going to do something else. But I'm going to glue that to my front flap. Um, and uh, then it will hang over a little bit. And that's a different kind of uh, flipbook. So first I'm going to do the exact same thing to the envelope base. I'm making sure that there's one eighth of an inch of space around the, the panel. So there's a little bit of the white showing through and I'm just going to stick this down as well. Uh, because it was my first time doing this, I was a bit nervous about sticking down the card panel already because I wanted to make sure that <laughs> I did everything I wanted to do before I stuck it down on there. Because once it's stuck down, it's stuck down, of course. And if it was inconvenient that it was already stuck down, 
um, I wouldn't like that. So that is why I did all these things before. Uh, in hindsight, you didn't have to do so, but it was easier with measuring when it's still two pieces. So now I take this beautiful pattern paper and I'm going to uh, do the inside of the card base <coughs> with this. Uh, because I didn't want to have a very very busy pattern because I wanted to add something on the inside uh, So I needed a pattern paper that was a bit more You know basic a bit more relaxed and <laughs> not as overpowering So that is why I chose this uh, beautiful pattern paper so if you wonder how I print and prepare my digital kits, I made a video uh, with a tutorial for you, uh, so you can do the same. I show you how I do it, but I also uh, give you a tutorial in Word. I share with you what kind of paper I use and uh, how I fussy cut and all the good stuff. So I will also leave that link down below in the description box so you can check out that video if you want to know how to prepare and print your digital kits and uh, make them ready for crafting. So this is the point where I decide that I'm going to stick it down. So I turn it over and uh, I make sure that I have only the how I want to stick it on there um, turned over on my base. <laughs> I don't know if that made sense, but that way I know I'm sure that there will be no extra glue on places that I don't want to have glue. So now there's this little piece of white card base showing and I'm going to add this scrap piece of paper from the front cover to you know spice up a little bit make it a bit fun and um that's the fun with scraps uh it fits my meal and uh, this scrap is used and it doesn't end up in my stash because i have tons and tons and tons of scraps so i am always very pleased if i can use up uh, some of my scraps in the project itself so now i am going to grab my embellishments and I am going to figure out what I want to do because the base is ready now so all you have to do is do some embellishing and what I like to do is I like to rummage through my basket and take out embellishments that will fit my meal and put them to the side so it's not that big of a piece that I have to go through now I'm going to stamp out Hello Jacqueline on a post-it. I thought this post-it fit really well with the color scheme that was uh, of the Sunny Days kit and I'm going to rip it out because I love the look of uh, ripped paper and uh, I really wanted to add her name on there because I love to do so so I thought stamping it would be perfect uh, for this uh, project and I really really like that so this is the embellishment cluster for the front cover and I'm also going to stick this down with some wet glue uh, with embellishments I switch between wet glue or a tape runner it depends on what I'm sticking down or it depends on what is on, on closest to me uh, but that is what I'm uh, what I'm doing here so now I am ready and I'm going to go through my little pieces there and I find some very cute tiny pieces that I can add to my embellishment cluster on the front cover and I will do so. <clears throat> so this is a summer themed meal as you see. Uh, I was kind of late with sending this out in summer and with all the meal being a bit upset. <laughs> sometimes it takes a little bit longer for it to arrive. So I'm a bit late with posting this but it doesn't really matter because this base you can do it with every meal you want. You can use ev whatever kit you would like to use. You can use whatever collection you would like to do use. You can make it odd themed or Halloween themed or any kind of theme or color scheme it doesn't really matter the base stays the same and I thought it was so fun to have something a little bit different uh, and a little bit more interactive so as you saw I'm creating a embellishment cluster inside the card base so I thought I wanted to have on one side just some prettiness and on the other side I'm going to create a little pocket with this scrap piece of paper and my pocket will be three inches uh, tall by I think two and a half inches wide and I always make sure that I have half an inch of a glue flap so I'm sure that it will stick down and that I don't have any trouble with gluing it or glue oozing out under it or anything like that and uh, this pretty pocket will fit one of my playing cards perfectly so you will see me later on add a washi sample in here 
But of course, I also need to decorate this first and I'm going just going through my embellishments to decorate my um, inside of this card. And I will be back when I have something else to say to you. So after I was done decorating all these pieces that you saw me decorate, uh, it was time to do the inside of the flipbook, like the biggest piece. And I have this um, really rectangular tall pattern and uh, a square one. Uh, but of course Link had to come over and check the project and chill with me. I decided to add another pocket and this pocket will be two and a half inches wide and it will cover the whole or almost the whole uh, card or the flipbook base. Oh, words are difficult today. <laughs> and uh, I will do the same as I do with all the other pockets, only this is a different format and a different size. Uh, but I just take the height of the paper that I already have and I'm going to distress this as well to keep everything cohesive. And I'm going to stick this uh, against the scoring line, not on top of the scoring line, because if you put it on top of the scoring line, your book will not close properly. But if you put it a little bit before the scoring line, there's no problem at all and it will close beautifully. And now I can start decorating the rest. So this was a bit of a challenge, a bit of a struggle, because I didn't really know what to do and I was kind of... I wasn't really happy with it what I did but in the end I'm very happy with what I made but it was just a lot of tossing and turning and uh, auditioning pieces and um, yeah you know sometimes things don't come out naturally so the base 
even though it was the first time that I did this, the bass came out very, very fast and very uh, natural. But sometimes like this, the embellishing, embellishing was not... Yeah, I didn't really like it and then I missed some pieces but what to put there uh, but in the end I really love uh, what I made so yeah I don't really know I don't really think it's very interesting to hear me talk about uh, putting all these embellishments on there and putting them away again so I just let you watch this part and if I have something to say again uh, you will uh, hear me again I finished decorating my flipbook <clears throat> I'm going to add my own sticker on the back and then I also added some stickers uh, as a goodie and I'm going to make my own writing paper so that is something what I like to do so here's the playing card I'm going to add the washi tapes uh, on there I love to give washi samples and I try to fit them to the color scheme of the mail uh, it's not always a perfect match uh, but uh, it's something I like to do and I also really enjoy using that washi then again on my writing paper so it will match a little bit I chose some pinks and some aqua turquoise colors and this thin strip has some shells on there and I thought that really fitted the theme of this uh, meal I always like to add some extra embellishments on a corner of the writing paper I don't do too much on the writing paper because I love to write a lot uh, and um, I don't want to add g a gazillion pieces of paper in there just because I had to decorate it so much. Uh, the letter is supposed to be a letter and uh, look a little bit cute, but uh, it's not meant to be over embellished. For me, at least, if you like to do that, I love those letters that are embellished and all pretty and stuff. But really, I just write too much. <laughs> I have too much to say <laughs> for that to be a thing I can do. And it would also not be a thing that I would share online because... I see people make those letters while writing them and for me a letter is something that is personal and I'd rather not share that uh, with you online here on YouTube because it's a bore about some privacy you know for the one who's receiving this and for me 
so now I'm going to make this little envelope. I think it's three by four inches and I'm going to add uh, some goodies in there. But of course this envelope will also have uh, distressed edges with this beautiful blue color. Uh, I th just thought this color was perfect for this collection. I really loved it and I rediscovered my distressing so that's also really good. I'm going to stick the flap down with some double sided tape. And then I'm going to decorate my envelope a little bit. So uh, I'm trying out some pieces. But I wasn't really happy with it and then suddenly I found everything. So I will go back into my basket again. That sometimes happens uh, that I don't have everything. And you can always, uh, of course, go back into your embellishment box. But it really helps me to just have a little small amount of stuff there. Uh, so I don't feel overwhelmed with all the options and all the choices I can make. <laughs> because it can be quite stressful to have so many beautiful things that you can use. Uh, and it can be a bit overwhelming. So that's what I like to put it there and usually uh, like I do now I take some of the pieces f That I have on the side and I will add those as goodies because they fit my meal I also added some project life cards for Jacqueline to use And I took this cute bag. I bought this bag off Aliexpress a Very 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 long time ago. I think it's maybe two years ago. I bought uh, these bags um, I'm still using them. I'm loving them uh, but um, I couldn't give you a link for them. Uh, but I like to add some little pieces in there and uh, close it up. And add that as well to my center pocket. Should we call it the center cup pocket? The big pocket. <laughs> add some extra goodies. So now it's time to decorate the envelope. I always check if my meal fits the envelope that I choose. Because it has happened to me in the past that I decorated an envelope. And the meal didn't really fit in there. Uh, and I'd rather not waste an envelope. Uh, because I like to match my envelopes to the projects that I'm making. So I would only be able to use this uh, envelope again if I would use this collection. Uh, that's just something I like. Uh, it's not, you don't have to, but it's something I like to do. Uh, but also with this envelope, I was quite a bit lost on how I wanted to decorate it. Uh, I definitely wanted to use some of my scrap papers. Um, and I didn't want to cut into new papers. So uh, that is what you see me doing here. And uh, in the end, I decide on this composition. And uh, I'm pleased with that. So I had to take this off screen and weigh my meal. Because uh, I typically send 100 grams. Uh, not more than 100 grams. Because that's three international stamps. Uh, and if I send out 105 grams, for example, it's six stamps so i'd rather not add six stamps because that's quite expensive uh, so i try to hit the 100 grams mark and that's why you also sometimes see me take it off the screen because this is a new format i didn't have a feel for how much it would weigh and that's what i checked i used just a small kitchen scale for that uh, and that's also how i measure and decide on how many postage stamps i need so after my envelope is done, I will add this little quote in the middle because I missed something there. And that was the process video for this flipbook. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask them and leave them down below in the comments section. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up. I would also love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Bye!